today we're going to take a look at the newest and fastest accelerator available for the Amiga 600, the Vampire 2. Now normally I wouldn't be too interested in a device like this, after all I do love the 68000 CPU and I am a hardware purist, however this accelerator board has piqued my interest with its sheer speed and performance. All for 160 US dollars it features a screaming fast 68000 base core, 128 mega fast RAM, digital video output via HDMI, SD card for storage, a 64 bit core with full 32 bit compatibility. The Vampire 2 smokes every other Amiga accelerator on the market, well, all except for the massively overclocked 68060 boards that I keep hearing the hardcore enthusiasts churning out. Installation of the device is very straightforward. The unit fits on top of the 68000 CPU in the Amiga 600. I had to remove my individual computer's ACA 620 first and replace it with the Vampire 2. Risers are included so the board sits flush against the CPU and there's no chance that the board can pop off the CPU. Putting the case back on we are ready to start. I will say on first boot I did have some compatibility issues. When I first loaded into Workbench everything appeared to be corrupted. I found out later that I had to modify my startup sequence and edit things out like FBlit and some other third party programs. And once I had done that, Workbench loaded just fine and I was ready to start doing some benchmarks. Now Sysinfo isn't a particularly accurate benchmark, but it is one that is widely recognized and used throughout the Amiga community. As you can see, the Vampire 2 crushes the 68060, clocking in at over 86 MIPS. Impressive stuff. Now my Rise of the Triad port runs as fast as I've ever seen it clocking in at over 19 FPS. And keep in mind this is straight C code and hardly optimized. I'll leave a link in the description below to download it from AmyNet. Definitely check it out. No surprises with Frontier, on both accelerators it cuts through the polygons like butter, but the Vampire 2 has the edge. There's a few minor stutters when running in the 060. I should mention that the 060 is also running in PAL mode while the Vampire 2 is in NTSC, hence the differences in the timing, otherwise they're about neck and neck. John Carmack once famously said that Doom wasn't possible on the Amiga. Well, we proved him wrong many years ago and here is far on the way the smoothest version I've seen running at the maximum 35 FPS. I'd like to see the updates to the Doom port sometime that lift that restriction so we can see how far we can push the Vampire 2. Now this last demonstration really shows the power of the Vampire 2. This is definitely the wow moment for me folks. What we have here is a 16 color workbench running and I'm loading an MP3 using Song Player. Keep in mind that it's at high quality stereo at 22 kilohertz through the Paula chip. Now this is normally a recipe for a ton of stuttering in almost all classic Amigas, but as you can hear it's not missing a beat. But let's not stop there, I'm running Final Rider word processing in the background and as you will see, 
I continue to load copies of Personal Pain over and over in an attempt to cause the MP3 to stutter. In the end, the song will end without a hitch. I've never experienced anything like this before on a classic Amiga. So what's my verdict on the Vampire 2? Well, for an FPGA based accelerator, which is something that I would never have considered in the past, I can categorically state this is the best accelerator that I've ever used on the Amiga. You should buy it without reservation. I know that they're in limited stock right now. Now, I do want to mention a couple of things. I had a, a few compatibility issues with the Vampire 2. The first thing I couldn't get to work was Shapeshifter. Now, I've seen some videos online of people booting into Mac emulation, so I'm not sure if it's just something that I was doing or not, or if there's some trick that I need to do, but I did everything that I would normally do, and I have set up Shapeshifter before. The second one I tried was Magic 64, the Commodore 64 emulator. Now, I ran this previously on my a1200 and I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison video but the problem is it didn't seem to run properly on the Vampire 2 as well. It would load fine but but when trying to run Ghouls and Ghosts it got to the title screen and then it just froze so I'm not too sure what's going on there as well and again I, a couple of other things I should mention about the Vampire 2 is if you have an Indivision ECS chip in your Amiga 600 unfortunately it's not going to work with the Vampire 2. You can only have one or the other. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing because the Vampire 2 comes with a built-in HDMI port. The second thing is currently there is no floating point unit in the FPGA. Now again, not a huge issue, but just be aware of it. There are some incompatibility issues. But guys, this is very minor nitpicking. Uh, for all you Amiga fans out there that have an Amiga 600 or you're in the process of picking one up for the Vampire 2, I can't recommend this enough. Do yourself a favor, throw down your $160 or your 150 euros. It's an absolute steal of an accelerator. I'm gonna go off and play with my Amiga 600. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Look for more Amiga videos soon. I've got a couple more things in the works, but for now, guys, hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.